This question is about mechanics and specifically it's about impulse and change in momentum. By the way, if you remember that momentum is uh, delta P, we have this impulse equation, right? So that's why, if you notice, that's why I put this down picture, delta P, ha ha ha, delta P, oh, okay. This is delta airlines with some P in it. Um, so this has to do with impulse. So let's take a look at the question. You know, we're told that we have a ball, and this ball has a mass of 0.2 kilograms, and it's flying through the air, and it initially has a speed of 4 meters per second. Now it runs into some sort of force sensor, and it sticks to it. So what they do is they tell you, all right, here's the graph of the force versus time, and they tell you this graph right here, and they ask, what's the maximum force here? What's this? Now, it might seem a little bit tough. Um, so first of all, I think it's a good idea to start off by thinking about force and time and maximum things. And I think this is where it's really nice to get out that equation for impulse. And you're not told that it's about impulse, but impulse is all about uh, forces and times. So anytime I see force over time, I think impulse. So we're, we're supposed to try to find this F max. So what I think is a good idea to do is actually try to find the equation for impulse. Go get this in your data booklet. There's an impulse, which is equal to F delta T, is also equal to delta P. Right? That's why, haha, -ha, delta P. Um, so if we look at this, this is the impulse, F delta T equals to delta P. What this really means, and we don't really need to know that it's impulse, we really then just need to know this here. The change in momentum is going to be F delta T. That's what we need to know here. Now, um, I think what's really nice to do is then to try to figure out something here. So if we look at this, um, delta P, we look at this, we can maybe sort of break this open. We can then say that F delta T equals, remember what delta P is, it's actually a mass times a change in speed. It's an M delta V. I think that might be the key thing here because we have to go from a speed of four meters per second to once it sticks to it, it's got zero. Because otherwise I didn't have enough information to do this here. Now, what I think is really nice to do is to take a look at this. If you don't know what to do with a graph, I always try to train my students. There's only three things you can do if you don't know what to do with a graph. You can read something directly. You can take the gradient of that graph, or you can take the area under the curve. And look carefully. If I did the gradient, that would be F over T. Well, that wouldn't really help me here. But the area under the curve is F times T, right? Like, you know, some length times some width. Something like that. So this times this. So F times T, that's the area under the curve. And look very carefully. That's what this is. So that's why, if you're really careful about it, you can see that the area under the curve here, so this area right here, this triangle here, that, I can call it area, I guess, equals F delta T. That's what this is. Which, remember, that's also equal to M delta V. So if I can figure out that area, maybe I'll call it capital A, just so we don't think it's like an acceleration or something like that. So we'll call it maybe capital A here. So that area right here, that is equal to F delta T, which is equal to M delta V. So because of that, then let's try to find the area. Now, I want you to look carefully at this graph because very often in IB exams, they try to mess with you with the units. It's not some nefarious intent, it's because they want to check if you know your physics, if you're careful. So force is always measured in newtons, and time is always measured in meter seconds, right? No, it's not. This is the sneaky one, look at this. There's no such thing as a meter second. This time, that's milliseconds. Watch out, that is really important. So in other words, your times are all in 10 to the minus 3 seconds. This is really important, okay? They're being sneaky here. Aha! So then all we have to do is we have to find that area. So what's the area under a curve? Well, the area, let's see here. Let's try to do that. Maybe I'll do it in a different color here. So let's see. So the area, well, that'll just equal, remember, I mean, if it's a triangle, isn't it? Like this. And how do you do the area of a triangle? You do the base times the height. Right? And you do that divided by 2. So you do half base times height. So if I did that, then I could say in this case, it's 1 half the base, which is 440 minus 400. I don't know if that made any sense. It's 440 minus 400, which is actually just 40 milliseconds. So it's 40 
times 10 to the minus 3 seconds times the height, which we don't actually know. That's actually f max. See, that that's actually what we know here. We have the area here, that's f max. So I don't really know what else to do here. I've just got this, right? I guess I could fix it up a little bit. I could say then that the area is, um, I could say it's 40 times 10 to the minus 3, all that over 2. Actually, instead of doing that, then let me just do something else. I mean, I can figure out what 40 uh, divided by 2 is, can't I? Well, I can do that without a calculator. Of course we can. 40 divided by 2 is 20, so that's a little bit nicer. 20 times 10 to the minus 3 times F max. But didn't we also say it equals MV? So we have this thing right here. Don't forget, that also equals the mass times the change in velocity. And this piece right here, we can also figure out. We actually know that. We know the mass. We know the mass is 0 0.2 kilograms. We know that the speed, the change in speed is actually 4 meters per second. So what's 0.2 times 4? Well, it's 2 times 4, which is 8, with a 0 point there. So basically, we have this. We have then that 20. Whoops, I should maybe change the colors here. Maybe I'll just make everything now in black. That'll maybe be nicer. So... So we can say then that you know, 20 times 10 to the minus 3 times F max equals 0 0.8. All right. Now, how do we actually do this? I mean, we can actually figure out some things here, right? Um, that's going to be 0 0.8. What we need to do then is maybe figure out what is 20 times 10 to the minus 3. Like, what, what is that really? If you think about it, that's 20. Um, and we put the decimal over by 1, 2, and then 3. So actually, it's 0 0.02. That's really what this is. So we have 0 0.02 times f max equals 0 0.8. This is a little bit gross because we're not allowed a calculator for it. So we can say that f max then is just 0 0.8 divided by 0 0.02. That we can say. Now, I don't like this at all. Um, I think it's really ugly. So you can actually move your decimal over by uh, 2. So you could say that's uh, 80 divided by, um, I can move that over by 2. That would be, that would move this over by 2 of them. So you get the number 2. Uh, if I move the decimal to the right by 2, I would get 80. That's a lot easier to look at than this. This looks complicated, so I just move the decimal enough to where I don't have any decimals. And you see that 80 over 2 is 40. So that's why we would say then that, that's why our final answer then is, uh, what do they call it? D. So F max equals 40 newtons. That's why it's D. Phew. Again, lots of work for just one mark, isn't it? But the key to doing this, and they really like these kind of questions. On IB exams, they like to ask you about impulse F delta T. And remember that F delta T is the area underneath an FT graph.